Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. New this morning cleanup is underway after an overnight fire on the west side. We'll tell you if anyone was hurt. The only thing I'm thinking is my children. They're home and I'm in a mall in a shootout. New information in that terrifying shooting at a South Carolina shopping mall. We have the latest. And caught on camera, the terrifying explosion caught on a ring doorbell video camera. We'll have those details. And happy Easter. Campers at Brackenridge Park ready to celebrate. We checked in with Jonathan Cotto yesterday live at the park. The park was packed. We're going to have the latest. Taking a look outside with live cam. 72 degrees, another muggy morning on this Easter Sunday. Sarah Spivey will have your Easter Sunday forecast in just a bit. Good morning. It is 6 o'clock this Sunday. It is Easter Sunday. What are your plans for today? Uh, to hopefully to spend some time outside. Uh, uh, really? Because I walked outside today <laughs> and it was like a wet blanket. I know. I know. It's, it's actually pretty disgusting outside. <laughs> Hair's doing okay? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're doing yeah, what we can. We're doing what we can with our hair. Yeah, the humidity <laughs> is the biggest thing today, but then between about 4 p.m. and 8 p.m., we're going to be monitoring for some isolated storms. Now, that time frame, thankfully, outside of, you know, Easter services and lunches and egg hunts, but we'll be watching things very carefully. So let's go ahead and take a look outside. We are dealing with cloudy start to the day today. It is humid. It's 72 degrees out there. East winds at about five miles per hour. Now we are not seeing uh, as uh, fine of a mist as what we saw yesterday, but there could be a few sprinkles out there early this morning. 72 in New Braunfels, 75 Del Rio, 73 in Hondo, 73 in Kennedy, 71 in Kerrville, 72 in Pleasanton, and zooming into San Antonio. It's 70 in the Converse area, 76 at Stinson, 71 Rio Medina, 70 in Bernie, and 71 up in Kerrville. So here's what to expect for your Easter Sunday. Morning services going to be cloudy and humid this morning with temperatures in the 70s. For Easter lunch or those Easter egg hunts, know that it's going to be humid, mostly cloudy, and near 80 degrees. It is this afternoon between 4 p.m. and 9 p.m. that we're going to be watching for some isolated strong to severe storms. So coming up in the forecast, I'm going to detail where the best chance for some isolated storms are today. And of course, I'll tell you how hot we're going to get apart from the storms for your Easter Sunday in just a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, cleanup is underway after an overnight fire on the city's west side. It happened last night at a home on Bluff Street, not far from Culebra Road. Crews say about half of the house was lit up in flames when they arrived. Luckily, they were able to get the fire knocked out just a couple of minutes. While no one was hurt, the family who lives there will be displaced for some time. Crews say the fire was sparked by a smoking accident. Damages are estimated around $30,000. In your morning headlines, a commercial oil tanker carrying more than 750 tons of diesel fuel sinking near southeastern Tunisia. In this video, you can only see the bow of the ship sticking out of the water. It was traveling from Egypt to Malta. It was diverted due to bad weather. But right now, emergency response plans are in place. There are fears of an environmental disaster. And caught on camera, ring doorbell video captures a moment. A duplex explodes. Look at that on your screen right now. That happened in Virginia. Two people were hurt in that blast, a man and a woman. Both are in the hospital this morning. You can see that explosion right there with life threatening injuries. While the exact cause of the blast has not yet been determined, early reports suggest it was a propane explosion. Now to the latest in the war in Ukraine, the Russian Defense Ministry issuing an emergency statement calling for the remaining Ukrainian forces in Mariupol to lay down their arms and stop fighting. ABC's Christine Sloan explains. Russia says it is now in control of Mariupol, which it has been brutally shelling for weeks. The Kremlin says the only Ukrainian fighters who are left there are in a steel plant and surrounded and is calling for them to surrender. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky says Ukrainian forces in Mariupol are indeed blocked and that while they're still fighting, the situation is critical. If Russia does indeed control Mariupol, it would open a key land bridge connecting Crimea 
Crimea to Ukraine's eastern Donbass region, where U.S. officials say the Russians are preparing a new offensive in the coming days. Meantime, Russia continues hitting targets across Ukraine, including this oil refinery in the east. Kharkiv also coming under attack on Saturday, an explosion believed to be caused by a missile left at least one person dead, another 18 wounded. Alina Fursova and her young daughters were caught in the explosion. Shrapnel is flying and cracking, she says. Some woman, God bless her, covered me with her body. And in Kyiv, new rocket attacks, even though Russian forces have withdrawn from the region surrounding the capital. We always have a threat of Russians coming back and trying to seize our capital. Russians uh, have shown that they are willing to use anything and everything to try and subjugate our country. But despite the war and threats of airstrikes, thousands of Ukrainians are returning home. We want to grow up our nation, our businesses, uh, our lives. We are Ukrainians. We are Ukrainians. (laughs) We can live in another country. Christine Sloan, ABC News, New York. And since the war in Ukraine started in February, San Antonians have been stepping up to help where they can. Coming up in our next half hour, GMSA will tell you how a local group raised hundreds of thousands of dollars in donations. Well, after two years, the Bear County Jail reports they have no positive COVID cases. The last time this happened was back in April of 2020. So since the start of the pandemic, 36,000 inmates have tested for COVID. Of those, 2,880 have tested positive. PCSO says they will continue to test all inmates who enter the jail and remain in isolation for 10 days pending results. Inside the jail, inmates are still required to wear masks and COVID vaccines are available for any inmate who wants to take one. Time now, just about 6.07, 72 degrees out. We've got a lot more to come on GMSA, including an overnight shooting at a Northside bar. We'll tell you everything we know so far. Plus, it is Easter Sunday. One of San Antonio's famous Easter traditions have returned. Let's talk about people at the park. John Dakota was there live yesterday. We got a lot of video overnight. We're going to explain. Taking a look outside with live cam. It is yucky and sticky and humid this morning at 72 degrees on your Easter Sunday. Sarah Spivey will have your Easter forecast when we come back. Good morning and welcome back. Breaking news overnight. We now know a man was killed after being hit by a train. San Antonio police responded to the scene. All of this happening on the city's east side. Our Jonathan Goto is there live. Jonathan, what's the latest on this terrifying situation? A terrifying situation indeed, Sarah. Right now we are learning that man was just lying on the tracks when that train came through. Uh, but let's take a look at what that scene looked earlier this morning. This all taking place on Roland and J Street at 1.30 this morning. We do know Union Pacific alerted San Antonio police and that's when they responded. They say the train conductor was able to notice the man on the tracks and immediately blared the horn and pulled the brake. But that man did not respond and the train was not able to stop on time. Now, Max, Sarah, this is only one of several incidents of this nature that's happened already this month. Of course, San Antonio police continue to investigate. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Jonathan. All right, so it is Easter Sunday, family and friends gathering for a San Antonio tradition that is back. Yeah, some of them camping out the local parks haven't been able to do so for the last two years overnight because of the pandemic. Many of this, many of them at one of San Antonio's favorite Easter camping spots. Of course, that's Brackenridge Park. Lots of families have been at the park all weekend long. All right, so people in San Antonio especially excited for the event this year. Like Sarah was saying, it was stopped for the last two years because of the pandemic. Now, Jonathan Cotto joined us live from there all of yesterday, showed us all the excitement. So many families out and about so happy to spend the weekend together. Remember the one guy was saying it's nice to just kind of escape uh, work and really just spend time outdoors away from technology technology with his loved ones. I know I was out laughing. One person was like, and this was my tent, but the <laughs> stick fell down. So it's no longer a tent. 
I love that. All right, so if you haven't worked out your Easter plans yet, don't worry, we have a list of them compiled on our website. So several churches in the area are hosting Easter-themed events for the whole family to enjoy. And many popular businesses are closed for today as well, which includes HEB. Don't try to go to HEB this morning because <laughs> it's closed. Uh, other places are Costco, the San Antonio, San Antonio Museum of Art, and Target. Now, some places will still be open, like Academy is open, CVS. Uh, Dollar General. So just take out your phone uh, and open your camera app right now and you can scan that QR code on your screen and it's going to take you straight to that list on KSAT.com. Now, a lot of people planned ahead. You and Sarah Spivey made a trip to HEB yesterday we together. We went to Central Market yesterday because oh, okay. it's closer to the station. Ah. But it was it was kind of packed for a second there, Sarah. It really I mean, was. You could feel everyone going to like, oh, we got to get our groceries and all because a lot of people are cooking today. Yeah, it really was packed yesterday. And, you know, something to be alert for today is although the weather will be quiet for most of Easter, between 4 p.m. and 9 p.m today that's when we're going to have to look out for the potential for some isolated strong to severe storms. So a quick timeline here for you. What to expect this Easter Sunday? Know that if you're heading to services this morning, cloudy, quiet, humid, and in the 70s, right around that time for lunch or brunch uh, into the early afternoon for Easter egg hunts, it's going to be humid, mostly cloudy and near 80 degrees. But again, 4 p.m. to 9 p.m., that's when we're going to be on the lookout for some isolated strong to severe thunderstorms, especially along and west of 35. Now, anywhere you see this pink color, that's where there's that chance for an isolated severe thunderstorm. What could happen? Well, isolated storms could produce up to quarter sized hail again today between 4 p.m. and 9 p.m. And that chance for isolated storms extends all the way to our southwestern uh, KSAT 12 viewing area, including the Eagle Pass area. So areas under the gun for some isolated severe weather today include San Antonio, New Braunfels, uh, areas uh, like Bernie, Bandera, Kerrville, Uvalde, Hondo, Eagle Pass, and the Winter Garden region. The main area for severe weather, though, across our nation is going to be the Mississippi River Valley. This is where scattered severe storms are likely to occur closer to this uh, low pressure system as well as an upper level low. But behind it, we've got a stationary boundary that will eventually go into motion, become a cold front, provide a little bit of a lift on the tail end of things for us to see a few isolated storms again 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, generally along and west of 35. So let me take you through the high res future cast here again. Most of the day will be quiet in San Antonio, but into the afternoon we're going to be watching the hill country as that cold front goes into motion and it could kick up some of those isolated strong to severe storms. Again, notice that the best chances along and west of I 35 uh, mainly between 4 p.m. and 9 p.m. Don't pay attention to exactly where this particular forecast model is showing this storm. This particular storm could be over San Antonio. It could be further off to the west, or we may not have enough lift to make it happen. So that's why the chance for storms today in the afternoon is only 30 percent, and it would be isolated if storms develop. The big thing that's going to impact everybody today is going to be the high humidity. Dew points are very high. Dew points are in the upper 60s near 70 degrees. That's at the top of the scale there. You feel the humidity when you step outside and you can see it. There's a bit of a haze on the horizon. It's 72 degrees right now in San Antonio. East winds at about five miles per hour. It's 76 at Stinson, 73 in Hondo, 70 in Bernie and 72 in New Braunfels. Clouds are going to be slow to erode like yesterday, but we still expect a very hot afternoon. Uh, temperatures are going to climb to near 90 degrees this afternoon afternoon. That is much higher than the average of 81 degrees. So stay hydrated. It's going to be a hot one. Here's a KSAT 12 hour forecast. Again, stubborn clouds this morning. A sprinkle or two is possible. We'll be in the mid 70s by 10 by the time service is let out and then into the afternoon Easter egg hunts and lunch. Just know that it's going to be near 80 degrees and we're going to start to see some sun peak out so it'll be warm and then between the hours of 4 p.m. and 9 p.m. That's when we have a 30% chance for isolated strong to severe storms capable of 
of producing up to quarter sized hail. We'll be with you the whole time, keeping you updated on air, online, and on the KSAT Weather Authority app. Otherwise, most of us are just going to experience a muggy and hot day with that high near 90 degrees. Tomorrow will be near 86 for the high temperature, a little bit cooler as that front moves through, but still warm. Tuesday morning, you might actually need the jacket if you're headed to work. 56 and then 83 for the high temperature. Unfortunately, no major rain chances in our future. Really, we need a good soaking rain, and other than today's isolated chance for some thunder showers, the only other chance for rain is Tuesday and Wednesday, and only isolated at that. Max and Sarah. Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. Did you make it outside yesterday? I did. It good was for warm. you. Yeah. No, I did it. <laughs> good for you. I'm not going to lie. I stayed in, watched Prime NBA time. playoffs all day. Oh, you... Look at three or four. Yeah. No shade. I don't know what's going on. Okay. <laughs> We're going to have the highlights from those playoff games in just a bit. But for now, just about 618, 72 degrees out. All right. Take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, 842, Fireball 8, Daily 4, 5736, Fireball 7. And your cash 5, 13, 14, 17, 21, 32. Lotto, Texas, 4, 8, 27, 32, 33, 48. And then here we go. Did you play? I did. I have checked my, tech, my ticket. Oh. It was like over $350 million. All right, so if she's not here in the 630, you I'm, know I'm why. I'm walking out right now. I'm going to check my ticket. Here are your power numbers. 15, 21, 32, 62, 65. Big number, 26. Megaplier, 5. Good luck. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. So the Spurs season is officially over, but the NBA playoffs officially begin, and they begin in Dallas. Number four seed Mavs taking on the Jazz, and Luka Doncic and Hardaway not playing. Luka sidelined with calf strain, taking on, remember, he did it during the Spurs. So Dallas hanging on tough. Reggie Bullock hit a corner three, pulled the Mavs within two, got Luka on his feet, but the Jazz would pull away late. Royce O'Neal hit that dagger. I think that was his only shot of the game. Utah won 95-91. Oh, they were leading 95-91. They would win overall 99-93. to So, to the next game. Second-seeded Grizz opened their playoff run at home, taking on the number seven T-Wolves, and boom. That's a possible dunk of the year. And the best part is, is Carl Anthony Towns over Jaron Jackson Jr. Remember, it's that plays for the Spurs. So, he finished, Cat, with 29 points, 13 rebounds. Minnesota hit 16 threes in the Timberwolves steal home court 130 to 117. But wait, there's more in our next half hour. Baseball season is in full swing. Rangers and Astros both in action yesterday. Coming up in our next half hour of GMSA, we're going to have highlights from both the games. Stay with us. We'll be right back. And just ahead on GMSA, we've been talking about Easter all morning. Right after the break, we'll show you how a local church is spreading the Easter spirit. Well, today is Easter Sunday, and a local church is kept that spirit alive all through the weekend with Easter baskets. So it's all an effort to show that they are there and their doors are open. So Marbach Christian Church held the event, and it was hosted by Joe and Regina Navarro from Humble to Serve, the congregation of Marbach Church, together with the people of San Antonio and the San Antonio Car Clubs all donated items for the baskets. So while they planned to give away 250 baskets, they ended up giving away 275. So Humble to Serve Ministries also helps the homeless community and they started giveaways when the pandemic began. So it's really inspiring to see them continue this and really open their doors for the community. We love to see it. Time now, just about 627, 72 degrees out. Well, much more ahead on GMSA, including the details of an overnight shooting on the city's north side. We'll tell you if anyone was hurt. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Easter Sunday. It is Sunday, April 17th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. So happy yesterday, Easter. happy Easter. Yesterday, the talk of the town was the heat index, the humidity. Oh, it was brutal. <laughs> but I mean, it's it, you still made it outside yeah, though. Yeah, because it's you know it's spring, it's Easter weekend. You mm. gotta enjoy being outside. I went on a walk, took the dogs. Good and for you. Slash bike ride. How are you feeling afterwards? Ew. <laughs> I had to go in and just kind of under the AC and the fan. Yeah. I, I God bless the people camping in the heat this weekend, Sarah. It's absolutely so humid out there. Yesterday, the story was the heat and humidity. Today, the story will still be the humidity, but. 
In the later afternoon and early evening hours from 4 p.m. to 9 p.m., we do have the potential for a few isolated storms, mainly along and west of I-35. But again, most of Easter will be quiet and humid. Let's take a look outside right now with live cam. You can see how cloudy it is, and uh, we're looking at 72 degrees right now at the airport. That's a uh, look out there at the airport. East winds at 5 miles per hour. Winds are not going to be strong today. They're going to be from the east at about 5 to 10 miles per hour, and that humidity is high. Those dew points are in the upper 60s, near 70 degrees. Temperatures uh, this morning are sitting in the low 70s, much warmer than average. 71 in Kerrville, 75 in Del Rio, 73 in Hondo, 72 in Pleasanton, and 73 in Kennedy. It is Easter. Happy Easter, everyone. I want to walk you through your forecast for the day. If you're heading out to service this morning. It's going to be cloudy and in the 70s and then by the midday for lunch, Easter egg hunts, those kinds of things, 80 degrees and then in the afternoon and evening again, 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. There's a 30% chance for some isolated strong to severe storms. We will, however, get up to a high temperature near 90 degrees and coming up, I'm going to detail which areas have the best chance for some storms and uh, how severe they could get in just a few minutes. It's Sarah and Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a man hit and killed by a train. San Antonio police responded to this situation on the city's east side. Our Jonathan Cotto joins us live with the latest on this terrifying situation. Jonathan. Sarah, it is a terrifying situation, and as we know, uh, the rate of speed at which these trains tr uh, travel, the Union Pacific uh, conductor noticing that man and attempting everything, but, you know, his efforts were unsuccessful. We know this all happened uh, close to 1.30 this morning on Jay and Roland. This is uh, happening on the city's east side. They say the train conductor was able to notice the man on the tracks and immediately blared the horn and pulled the brakes, but that man on the tracks did not respond. And the train was not able to stop on time. Max, Sarah, uh, we know this is only one of several incidents uh, of this nature taking place. Uh, just a couple of uh, uh, days ago, several uh, uh, incident on Tuesday happening uh, along the same lines. But of course, we know San Antonio police are investigating. Uh, reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Also new this morning, one man in critical condition after a shooting on the city's north side. This was the situation around 2.15 this morning. This is the parking lot of the Rue Pub and Angry Elephant. This is right off 281 near Redland Road. Police there telling us there was an argument inside the bar. It spilled into the parking lot. That argument escalating to a shooting. At least 15 shell casings found in that parking lot. We're told the suspect crashed into several parked vehicles while driving away. The victim currently in critical condition, but the suspect still on the loose. An update now on a story we first brought you right here on GMSA, and now we know the name of the teenager that was killed on Thursday night. The Bear County Medical Examiner identifying that victim as 17-year-old Dominic Hernandez. Police say he was shot to death on Stony Brook Drive, not far from Medina Base Road. According to SAPD, 43-year-old Gerardo Godina has been charged with murder in this case. And this morning, police say they've made an arrest after a shooting at a crowded mall in Columbia, South Carolina. But they say they'll say they're trying to identify two more people who were seen with guns just before shots went off. ABC's Christine Sloan has a story. I heard like 20 to 30 shots inside the mall. Multiple shots fired inside the mall coming from the gas area. Police responding to reports of shots fired at the Columbiana Center Saturday afternoon. Officers blocking access to the mall as they went in with long guns. Oh my God. This video taken from inside the mall shows the chaotic scene. You seen blood on the floor. You saw people on gurneys. You saw people with bandages on them. And I saw multiple people with uh, gunshot wounds. The only thing I'm thinking is my children, they're home and I'm in a mall in a shootout. Employees and shoppers were originally told to shelter in place, police clearing stores one by one and escorting everyone out. Officials set up a reunification center at a hotel not far from the mall where family and friends could find each other. Investigators do not believe the shooting was random. We believe that uh, the individuals that were armed knew each other 
uh, and there was some type of conflict that occurred. Early Sunday morning, police said 14 people were hurt in the shooting. Nine suffered gunshot wounds. The rest were hurt while running. Christine Sloan, ABC News, New York. And in the Houston area, a woman is facing federal charges after her mobile home was found with $2 million worth of crystal meth. Also inside her home, a two-year-old son. So deputies responded to the home after a call where a woman said she was under the influence and unable to take care of her child. So when deputies arrived, they found a fully functional meth lab inside. A total of more than 240 pounds of crystal meth and 192 pounds of liquid meth was found inside of that house. The child is now with Child Protective Services. Well, since February 24th, the world has watched the war in Ukraine unfold through donations of medical supplies and money. San Antonians are now answering the call to help out. Lee Waldman spoke with a man living in that war-torn country. March 10th, less than a month after the war began, Maxim Povemki's life changed. My son was crushed with his concrete plates that they, the firefighters couldn't remove by hand. Speaking through a translator, Maxim shared how his 15-year-old son Ivan was crushed by concrete walls after Russians allegedly bombed the fire station he and others were taking shelter in. When they were able to free Ivan, he was rushed to a hospital and then transported to Poland as he waits to come to the U.S. for further treatment. His condition is not stable, so he's not able to travel to United States. Maxime and Ivan's story among thousands in Ukraine, inspiring people here to give back. It's going to be a little bit more than $300,000. People of San Antonio donated over $17,000 to send for medical supplies to Ukraine. Ukrainian San Antonio and the Ukrainian Society of San Antonio have hosted multiple medical medical supply drives and raised hundreds of thousands of dollars to send directly to the people of Ukraine. We bought mini ultrasound for hospitals. We uh, sent a lot of funds to feed people. We sent a lot of funds for medical emerging uh, kids. While the number of donations have slowed since the start of the war, people and businesses here have continued to offer support. Every time when, when we see like we stand with Ukraine or people giving us money or people who don't know us, they like giving us thousand dollars. We cry. And I would say even magical because so many people responded with kindness and so many people showed their support. Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. So there are still more opportunities to help Ukrainian San Antonio is hosting a medical drive tomorrow from 915 in the morning until 315 in the afternoon at UT Health San Antonio. We have all this information right now. Just head to KSAT.com. Right, there are big elections coming up in May. One of the biggest here locally is that $1.2 billion bond program. The city of San Antonio mayor and city council voting to approve 183 projects, all part of this bond program to be included in that May 7th election. So at $1.2 billion, this is the largest bond program in the city's history. Here's the thing. It's not projected to increase the city's tax rate. So later this morning on GMSA at 8 a.m., the 2022 bond program chai chair, Brandon Logan, joining us live to talk about these projects. Okay, if you haven't filed your taxes, the deadline is tomorrow, April 18th. So if you're filing electronically, you actually have until 8 p.m. tonight. So again, deadline if you're doing electronically, 8 p.m. tonight. Tomorrow is the actual deadline. Deadline. So right now, just head over to ksat.com. We have everything you need to know about filing your taxes and that deadline. All right, time now just about 640, 72 degrees out. Still ahead on GMSA, many are waking up celebrating Easter this morning. We'll tell you about some of the businesses that are closed this morning for the occasion. And for all those people camping, more power to you. Hopefully you're keeping hydrated because it's hot and humid. 72 degrees now. What is the rest of the day? What does the work week look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a bit. and friends are gathering this weekend for Easter Sunday. Some of them camping out at our local parks, many of them at one of San Antonio's favorite Easter camping spot, Brackenridge Park. Yeah, lots of families have been at the park all weekend long. People here in San Antonio are especially excited for this event. Of course, as we haven't had this overnight camping for the last two years because of the pandemic, but now people get to be back 
camping. Oh yeah. All right, so if you haven't figured out your Easter plans, don't worry, we have a full list on our website. A lot of stuff going on. Several churches in the area are hosting Easter-themed events for the entire family to enjoy. Yeah, they have an egg drop. They have a oh, helicopter egg drop at a local the, the, uh, Calgary Baptist Church. And then uh, the, the extravaganza at Tower of America. Yeah, I think uh, noon and 4 p.m. I'm missing ah. another time in there. Just go ahead to kateset.com. <laughs> you can take out your phone right now and scan this QR code. Uh, we'll also have a list when you go to this QR code of the places that are closed today. Like, don't try to go to HEB this morning because it is closed. Also, other places that are closed are Costco and the San Antonio Museum of Art. Target is also closed today. Some places are open. Academy is open. Uh, CVS Pharmacy and, and Dollar General are all, are all open as well. So just, I know it can get confusing. Everyone's open and closed on different holidays, but just scan this QR code and we'll take you straight to that list on ksat.com. All right, so for all those people though, out at the park, I know Sarah yesterday, you were like, you gotta stay hydrated. Absolutely, and today's the same. It's gonna be humid and warm all day long. In fact, all of us are going to experience that humidity and that heat today, but a few will see some isolated storms between the hours of 4 p.m. and 9 p.m., some of which could be strong or severe, but the humidity, the biggest thing, let's take a look outside right now with live cam, you can see those clouds out there right now it's 72 degrees east northeast winds at about five miles per hour uh, yesterday we had some pretty fine mist in the area i was lowering visibility to less than 10 miles and we're still seeing some areas of patchy mist like up in kerrville where visibility is down to five miles visibility down to eight miles in san marcus down to seven in castroville but a perfect 10 visibility right now at the airport in san antonio uh, again it's a mild morning we we usually see a morning low right around 58 this time of year, and it's in 15 degrees warmer than that right now. It's 73 in Castroville, 73 in Port SA, 72 in in San Antonio, 70 in Bernie, 70 in Kerrville, 72 in Pleasanton, and 72 in New Braunfels. The high humidity is going to be the thing that everyone notices today. Current dew points in the upper 60s and low 70s. It is oppressively humid outside. And so today, in spite of the fact that we're going to start off with clouds in the afternoon, it's going to get hot. We'll be looking at a high temperature near 90 degrees this afternoon, mid 90s the further west you go toward Hondo and and, uh, Yavaldi, and up in the hill country, it should be near 90 degrees as well. But because of the high humidity, it's going to feel a couple of degrees warmer than that. So let me take you through your KSAT 12 hour forecast this Easter Sunday. If you're heading out to services, things are going to be fairly mild for you. Temperatures are only going to be in the 70s. It's going to stay cloudy. There might be a sprinkle or two, but that's about it. And then as we head into the midday hours for Easter lunch or uh, some of those Easter egg hunts, it's going to be a warm one. Temperatures are going to be close to 80 degrees and we're going to start to see the sun into the afternoon as well. Then rain chances really do start to tick up for between 4 p.m. and 9 p.m. Notice that there's only a 30% chance for isolated storms, but if a storm develops, it could very well become severe with large hail being the main threat. A high temperature close to 90 degrees this afternoon, as I mentioned. So in this light pink area, this is where we have a chance for isolated severe storms. Notice that it does include San Antonio, New Braunfels, Canyon Lake, Bernie, Bandera, Kerrville, Hondo, Sabinal, Uvalde. What are we looking out for? Isolated storms that could produce quarter sized hail. When? 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. today. And notice that the best chance is along and west of I-35. It does extend southward toward Pleasanton and Atascosa County, out toward Eagle Pass in Maverick County. Again, we'll be watching for isolated storms between 4 p.m. and 9 p.m. Do not expect a drought denter with this because of the isolated nature of the storms. Unfortunately, it's not going to be a widespread rain event for us. Areas that are going to see more scattered severe storms are going to be the Mississippi River Valley. They're closer to the main level of energy there with that low pressure system pushing off to the east. We're on the tail end of things. A stationary boundary is going to get into motion. A cold front is going to move through and that's 
that's going to provide that lift for some of those isolated storms along and west of I-35. This is a look at the future cast here for you again between 4 p.m. and 9 p.m. Don't pay attention to exactly where the future cast puts these potential storms because again, they could be anywhere really along that cold front, including near San Antonio. And then through as, as soon as we see the sunset, we're going to see our rain chance end. And again, I don't expect any kind of drought busting rain today because of the isolated nature of the storms. 30% chance for storms, but 100% chance for the humidity and for the warmth today. All right, we'll be near 90 degrees tomorrow. Just a little bit cooler, but still warm with highs in the mid 80s. Tuesday morning, you may actually need the jacket as temperatures will fall into the 50s. Once again, a high temperature in the low to mid 80s on Tuesday and most of next week will feature highs in the 80s and humidity will return by the middle of the week. Unfortunately, again, no major chance for rain, just some wimpy rain chances. I Isolated here and there, especially today, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Maxi Wimpy Rain. Do you want to give your motivational speech to the rain again? Be somebody. There you go. <laughs> Time now, just about 6.50, 72 degrees out. Oh my gosh, baseball season, it's back, Max. It is back, and we got two big Texas teams in action yesterday. We're going to have highlights from both of their matchups. I know people will be getting up early this morning to head out to those Easter Sunday services or masses. Uh, just taking a look out by, outside of the roads. It's 6.50 right now. So far, no incidences that we're seeing on our TransGuide cameras. Taking a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, eight, four, two, eight. Why are you making that face at me? Part I'm just eight. amazed you're still here. You didn't check the lotto I ticket. I know, it's in my car. I don't want to go in my okay. car. Daily four, five, seven, three, six, fireball seven. I mean, 300 million, it can wait. Yeah, cash <laughs> five, 13, 14, 17, 21, 32. Lotto Texas, four, eight. 27, 32, 33, 48, and here we go. Powerball, this is the one that dictates whether or not Sarah Coast will be here for 8 a.m. Let's see. 15, 21, 32, 62, 65, a big number 26, Megaplier 5. Good luck. We'll be right back. Good morning. Welcome back. And baseball is back. Astros taking on the Mariners. Look at this. I love the view. Good camera angle. All right, so here we go. Top of the second. Jeremy Pena from the Astros, right to center fielder, Julio Rodriguez. Oof, and there we go. Nico Goodrum scoring 1-0 Astros. So we're going to, wait for it, top of the fifth. All right, Martin Maldon, Maldonado hitting a two-run homer left field. Jeremy Pena scores 3-0 Astros. We're just racking them up. So as we just mosey around the bases. Julio Rodriguez, top of the fifth, closing the gap right there in the center field. Wow, diving catch, beautiful. That's goals right there. Yeah. That's a highlight. Yeah. Oh, what do you mean? Uh, that's, that's athleticism. <laughs> well, it's the Rangers, that's why. <laughs> oh, that's fair. All right, so um, no, it's the Mariners. I'm sorry, the Mariners, Mariners. Yeah, I thought you were an Astros fan. I am but a here's fan. here you go. Here's a fan favorite, Jose Altuve, RBI single right in the center field. Jeremy Pena would score 4-0 Astros. And I mean, it was really just the Astros game the entire time. So Astros would win 4-0. Gotta love a shutout. Go Astros. There we go. I'll get you a jersey. It'll be great. So from one Texas team to another, we got the Rangers taking on the Angels. Atani, the man, the myth, the legend, a quick RBI single. Andrew Velasquez scoring 1-0 Angels. Look at that, a little pip in a step. Top of the third. See, now you can say it's the Rangers, so you're not very excited. <laughs> Max Stasi, RBI single, a sharp ground ball to the right field. Mike Trout scoring 3-0 Angels. See, we know that you're not going to root for the Rangers, and that's okay because they didn't end up winning this. Spoiler alert. So, Marcus, big bat Marcus hitting an RBI double. Line drive center field. Andy Abanez scoring 3-1 Angels. We're going to bottom of the second. Ugh, Tyler Wade, field the ball. He made it stick to his glove. First baseman, Matt Duffy, that's out for Nathaniel Lowe. Nail the top of the coffin, wait for it. Ooh, that's pretty. Can you do that? Sure. All right, you know, we, Sarah and I were on a softball team for a second. We did pretty good. We did do pretty good. All right, here we go. This was the nail in the coffin, though. And wait for it, wait for it. That's out of there. All right. So, Angels win 7-2. to two. Sorry, Rangers, but it is a long season. 
All right, coming up on GMSA at 8, friends and family are remembering a San Antonio icon this morning. We're talking about Hispanic Elvis who gathered a crowd one last time at his funeral service. We're going to have more on the legend's life and legacy and what he means to our San Antonio community. This morning is going to be cloudy as you're heading out to Easter services or just enjoying your Easter morning and it'll be in the 70s right around lunchtime will be close to 80 degrees. Easter egg hunts should be nice and quiet, but in the afternoon we will top off near 90, but between 4 p.m. and 9 p.m. There is a 30% chance for isolated thunder showers, some of which could be strong or severe. Uh, we'll be keeping an eye on things for you. Otherwise, expect a warm week ahead. Temperatures will be in the 80s. Only isolated rain Tuesday and Wednesday. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. We're going to take an hour-long break. We'll see you back here at 8 a.m. See you at 8. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. New this morning, another deadly situation involving a train where this tragedy happened and how we have the details coming up. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto. San Antonio police are investigating a shooting taking place right here outside of this Northside bar. We'll tell you everything we know coming up on GMSA. Okay, you can see that humidity in the air. Uh, 72 degrees at 8 a.m. this morning. Sarah Spivey says it's going to be a muggy Easter Sunday. She'll have our forecast in just a bit. Good morning. Happy Easter Sunday, 8 o'clock this Sunday, April 17th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Speaking of people outside, we know a lot of people out and about at our nine San Antonio parks. Getting overnight camping. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I'm not good a, for them. Good for them because I'm not a camper. I like being outside all day, mm -hmm. but being in those tents right now with the yeah. humidity, <laughs> even if you unzip the tent, it's going to be even more humid. <laughs> so, uh, Sarah, people need to, need to be drinking a lot of water trying to stay cool today. Yeah, humidity is a big story for everyone today. It's going to be humid and warm, but there is the potential for some storms later on later this afternoon and evening. So let's go ahead and take a look outside right now. Most of your Easter Sunday will be quiet. 72 degrees outside right now with east southeast winds at about 10 miles per hour. It's in the 70s just about everywhere you look much warmer than seasonably average. Usually we see a morning low right around 59 this time of year. So we're warmer than that. 73 in Pleasanton, 73 in Eagle Pass and 74 in Del Rio. Let's zoom in. It's 68 in Bernie, 70 in Rio Medina, 70 in Bulverde, 72 in New Braunfels and 75 at Stinson, 73 in Pleasanton. So here's what to expect today. Morning Easter services. Uh, if you're about to head out, cloudy, humid, and in the 70s, quiet. But right around lunch, uh, for any kind of Easter egg hunts or things like that, it's going to stay quiet, humid, mostly cloudy and near 80. So most of your Easter activities won't be interrupted. However, 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. We are going to have to look out for isolated, strong to severe storms, some of which could be capable of producing some hail. So coming up in the forecast, I'm going to detail which areas have the best chance for those isolated storms. And of course, we'll talk about how hot it's going to get in the afternoon. Otherwise, Sarah and Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, San Antonio police are investigating a shooting at a Northside bar that's left one person injured. That's right. Jonathan Cotto joining us live from that bar where it all happened. Jonathan, good morning. What have you been able to learn? Good morning, Max. Well, information is limited right now, but we are learning a man was shot right here in this parking lot. He has been taken to University Hospital. Police tell us in critical condition, but let's take a look at what that scene looked like. Police are telling us they were called out to the Rue Pub. It's a, it's a bar on the city's north side, close to 2.30 this morning. They say it was a fight that started inside the pub that escalated and carried out to the parking lot. Police say they found at least 15 shell casings and at least five vehicles were hit. Now, we're told the gunman did take off in a car. Uh, police are getting different accounts of that car's color, so they're hoping to uh, be able to uh, interview the, the victim and gain more information on that suspect. But this case remains under investigation. Reporting live from the city's north side, Jonathan Cotton, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. New this morning, for a second time in almost a week, a train hit someone and that person di has died. Police say a man was lying on the tracks, the train tracks at J Street and Roland Avenue around 1.30 this morning. Authorities say the train conductor spotted the man, hit the brakes and tried to alert him to get off of the tracks by sounding the horn. We're told the man did not move and was hit. He was pronounced dead at the scene. 
police are investigating. Last Tuesday, police found a man dead on a railroad bridge near I-35 in Loop 410. They said he had also been hit by a train. Also new this morning, the medical examiner's office now identifying a 17-year-old boy who was shot and killed on the southwest side. The teen's name, Dominic Hernandez. And we also know 43-year-old Gerardo Godina being charged with murder in connection to Hernandez's death. This is a mugshot from a previous arrest back in 2015. As for the shooting that killed the 17-year-old, that happened just after 10 o'clock this past Thursday, the 5600 block of Stony Brook near Medina Base Road. The details of what exactly led up to the shooting still are not known. And right now, police are still investigating. Well, since the war in Ukraine started on February 24th, the San Antonians have stepped up to help. The group called Ukrainian San Antonio has raised over $300,000, and the Ukra Ukrainian Society of San Antonio has donated over $17,000. Both organizations have hosted multiple medical supply drives to send directly to the people of Ukraine. While the number of donations has slowed since the start of the war, people and businesses here have continued to offer support. Every time when we see like we stand with Ukraine or people giving us money or people who don't know us, they like giving us thousand dollars, we cry. And I would say even magical because so many people responded with kindness and so many people showed their support. There are still more opportunities to help. Ukrainian San Antonio is hosting a medical drive on Monday tomorrow from 915 in the morning until 315 in the afternoon at UT Health San Antonio. All right, it is Easter Sunday and we want to give you a quick reminder about places which are closed for the holiday. Now, if you forgot to pick something up from the store, you're out of luck if you're thinking about going to HEB. HEB and Costco closed today along with Target and the San Antonio Museum of Art. Some places are still open. Academy, CVS Pharmacy, and Dollar General. So we have a full, complete list of all these closings and openings right now. Just head to KSAT.com. Well, there are big elections coming up in May, and on May 7th, one of the most important votes here locally, the $1.2 billion bond project. At $1.2 billion, this is the largest bond program in the city's history, and it is not projected to increase the city's tax rate. So joining in today's leading essay segment is Brandon Logan, the 2022 bond program tri-chair. Good morning, Brandon. Thank you so much for joining us on Easter Sunday this morning. Good morning, Sarah and Max. Thank you for having me. So, Brandon, the proposed bond, $1.2 billion, not projected to increase the city's tax rate. So where is this more than a billion dollars coming from? Great question. You know, uh, San Antonio has a history of establishing success in the bond programs to build out infrastructure and address those most critical needs. And this year's program is no different. In fact, uh, the dollars come from the general fund um, and it's over a five year period of time. I think we're also in a unique position this year uh, with some of the COVID relief dollars through ARPA, TxDOT, um, et cetera. We've, we've been able to leverage nearly $270 million in addition to the 1.2 billion uh, coming out of our general uh, budget over the next five years. So Brandon, our viewers just saw kind of a list of these projects on their screen, a total of 183 of them associated with this bond included in six different propositions. So which projects jump out to you? So, so for me, before we get to the projects, the process, it was, you know, a, a citizen driven process that allowed us to really shape and mold and design a program that really addressed the fundamentals of our city. You think about coming out of COVID and some of the, the catastrophes that we've had experienced individually and collectively, we needed an infrastructure bill that would help us to, you know, address the needs now, but also to put the infrastructure in place uh, for a growing city like San Antonio. I personally uh, love that we are investing in areas for essential workers, those individuals that are living at or below the poverty line. Uh, to ensure that we are adding strength and vitality uh, in our programs. Now, you kind of touched on it right now, uh, you know, infrastructure, a big topic. And of course, San Antonio and the surrounding area, one of the fastest growing areas in the country. So from your perspective, why is this bond so important? Well, Max, you, you hit on a lot of the key indi indicators, um, you know, population growth, 
um, high demand in, in some of these um, workforce areas and we need housing. You know, so six propositions, as Sarah mentioned, are on the ballot. Five propositions are project specific, uh, 183 projects to be specific. Uh, and then you have housing. Housing is not project based, it's priority focused. And so oftentimes people think about the increase in housing costs uh, and we're gonna address that, but we're also going to support those individuals on fixed income like seniors who perhaps need to make improvements to their house to ensure that they remain in their house. Um, and we also are addressing individuals that are transitioning out of homelessness to permanent supportive housing. And then you think about the median income and the cost, uh, the rising cost of rental rates and uh, acquisition of purchasing a house. We wanna make sure that every group uh, that needs housing has the ability to uh, support that. And so the $150 million out of housing is in alignment with the strategic housing implementation plan that was designed by city leadership and the citizens uh, some years ago. So there's great alignment with the dollars that are invested to ensure uh, that we can continue to take care of home. All right. So you kind of touched on it a little bit, and I know that there's been a lot of community interaction in shaping this $1.2 billion bond. But on top of previous reaching out to community members, you guys actually had a committee of community members to shape all this, right? The great, the great thing about it is we had a unified council that understood where we're at, the state of our community at this time. And so each council member had appointments uh, to each respective bond committee and also the mayor had appointments. And so you, you talk about city staff plus citizens that are engaged in this process to produce what we're looking at on the screen today. So uh, the six propositions, as I'm speaking to other residents today, this was shaped by us, volunteers, individuals that are paying taxes like you and I uh, to ensure that we are addressing uh, the most area, critical areas of need. Yeah, I see the 471 million going to streets, bridges, and sidewalks. That's a lot of the money in that area. Brandon, thank you so much for breaking down all this information for us. Um, again, for our viewers who are watching, this interview will be up on KSAT.com later this morning. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you. Time now, just about 812, 72 degrees out. Well, still to come, a new study in psychiatry says exercise may substantially lower the risk of depression. We'll explain. And after a long renovation, a Southeast Side library is back and better than ever. We're going to take you inside after the break. 72 degrees at 811 this morning. You can see that humidity is kind of like, almost feels like it's sticking to the camera there. <laughs> Sarah Spivey has our Easter Sunday forecast when we come back. From the Creelis Branch Library is now ready for the community to check it out. A grand reopening just yesterday so people could get an inside look. It was closed for renovation through a large part of the city's San Antonio bond program, a $2.5 million project, and in that it includes spaces for kids and teens, new technology, and improvements to common areas like study rooms and meeting rooms. Library staff says they're ready to get back to serving the community. We're excited to celebrate and to show off uh, all the wonderful improvements that we have made to this branch library. This community much deserves a library that instills pride in the community, and this is a beautiful building. Well, the library is also equipped with a Learn at San Antonio Public Library Center. It provides adult services such as job hunting and education. Um, and Sarah, you know, we know the humidity is a big talking point today, but you said a chance of isolated thunderstorms is also possible. That's right. You know, between about 4 p.m. and 9 p.m., we will be seeing some isolated storms around the KSAT 12 viewing area, some of which could be strong or severe. But for most of your Easter, it'll be just quiet and humid. So let me take you through that. Uh, today, uh, for any morning services, cloudy, humid, and in the 70s. Then by the time of lunch and any Easter egg hunts, it's going to be humid and mostly cloudy. It'll be warming up near 80 degrees 
degrees. But again, if you have plans from 4 p.m. to 9 p.m., be on alert because there are going to be some isolated strong to severe thunderstorms capable of some hail. And the Storm Prediction Center has just updated us to a uh, slight risk for severe weather. So that means there will be scattered severe storms anywhere in this dark pink uh, color here, and that does include San Antonio, New Braunfels, Seguin, up toward Bernie, Kerrville, Hondo, Sabinal for the risk for a few storms that could produce up to golf ball sized hail. When again, 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. today is the time frame, and it does extend out toward uh, the Eagle Pass area toward the border as well. This is not going to be a drought denter for us, but it is going to provide us with at least the opportunity for some some showers and some storms, which we could use. Other areas across the nation dealing with severe weather this afternoon going to be the Mississippi River Valley. And in fact, those areas are already seeing some severe weather. Uh, but we are right along a boundary here, a stationary boundary that's going to turn into a cold front and push to the south and provide a lift for the opportunity for some storms. 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. Again, that's the time frame here. Let me take you through the high res future cast again. That front will produce some isolated to scattered severe storms this afternoon and into the early evening hours. Uh, 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. is the time frame. And although this particular model does show uh, it across the hill country, again, this storm could be anywhere. It could be over San Antonio. It could be out toward Del Rio. It could be near Uvalde. So don't pay attention to exactly where the forecast model puts the potential storm uh, just know that it's showing that there is that potential for uh, some isolated to scattered showers and storms. Storms would be capable of producing some again up to golf ball sized hail. We're going to be on top of that. Make sure to have your KSAT Weather Authority app handy. Otherwise, again, most of your Easter will be quiet and it will be humid. Here's a look at the current dew points. Dew points are in the upper 60s near 70 degrees. That's close to the oppressive range, so you feel every day degree out there today and you can see those clouds out there too. It's 72 degrees. Winds are generally from the east at about 10 miles per hour. That humidity is high. Elsewhere it's 71 in Bulverde, 71 Rio Medina, 72 in New Braunfels, 75 at Stinson. And again today, even though we're starting off with clouds, we are going to see afternoon sun and that means it's going to get hot. Temperatures should be near 90 degrees. That is 9 degrees above the average high we usually see this time of year, which is 81. So it is going to be a hot, humid day. And then again, between 4 p.m. to 9 p.m., we're going to be on alert for the potential for some severe storms. Let me take you through your KSAT 12 hour forecast. We'll put it all together for you. Cloudy this morning with a sprinkle or two possible. Then right around lunch, we're going to start to see some peaks of sunshine there and it'll get hot. Temperatures are going to soar into the 80s and eventually to 90 degrees. And again, between 4 p.m and 9 p.m. Strong to severe storms are possible. Now the chance for rain in your backyard is 30%, but if you do get a storm, it could very easily become severe with large hail being the main threat. We're going to continue to keep you updated again, 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. That is the time frame there uh, and uh, we'll we'll keep an eye on things. Make sure you have that KSAT Weather Authority app handy. Otherwise, Monday and Tuesday are going to be in the 80s by Tuesday morning you might need the light jacket. Temperatures are going to be in the 50s, but humidity returns and it's going to be a warm and humid rest of the week with only a chance for isolated showers and storms Tuesday and Wednesday. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 821, 71 degrees out. All right, exercising to benefit your body and mood. What a new study is saying about the link between physical activity and depression. Good morning and welcome back. In your health news this morning, a new analysis finds getting up and stretching your legs could help your mood. Even small doses of physical activity, such as a brisk walk, may substantially lower the risk of depression. 15 different studies involving more than 190,000 people, well, it showed how much exercise was needed to just reduce depression. 
Now, the study found the benefits were strongest when a person transitioned from being a couch potato to adding movement to the day. Adults who did activities up to 75 minutes of a brisk walk a week, they had an 18% lower risk of depression compared to those who didn't exercise. Do you want to show off some of the moves that you were doing? No, it's just the, the video of the girl. She was like really aggressively doing the elliptical. Um, don't do that. Yeah, don't do that, but no. <laughs> get out there, enjoy a walk. Yeah, and, a walk. Uh, uh, we have so many great shaded uh, parks and oh, trails yeah. to, that help from the heat. That's what I do. <laughs> Love it. All right, just about 826, 72 degrees out. All right, straight ahead, family and friends come together for a final public goodbye for Hispanic Elvis. And right after the break, more on that shooting outside a bar on the north side that ended with a man in critical condition. Jonathan Cotto there live throughout the morning. He's going to be joining us with the latest. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Easter Sunday. I'm Max Massey. I'm Sarah Costa. It's Sunday, April 17th. Also, tomorrow is tax day. Don't forget. Mm. Uh, beautiful. Okay. Yeah, let's, I, let's pump the brakes here. <laughs> it was not beautiful yesterday. You did go outside. I went outside, yeah. and it was nice so good for you. When, when the cloud covered. Even when there. you said it was nice, you're like, I guess it was nice. I'm just, you know, it's Easter weekend. So hey, guys. I mean, out. beauty is in the eye of the ball. Thank, good thank point. You, Sarah right? Spivey. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and today's going to be an interesting day because I know a lot of people are going to be out this afternoon. Uh, between the hours of 4 p.m. and 9 p.m., there is the potential for a few severe storms. So we've got to keep that in mind. There will be that window, 4 p.m. to 9 p.m., where, where one or two storms could develop that could produce some hail. But otherwise, it is going to be a muggy and humid Easter Sunday for us. 72 degrees outside right now. It is cloudy. We are going to see some sun in the afternoon. If you're planning your Easter uh, day today, just know that the morning is going to be quiet in the 70s this morning as you're heading to services or coming back and around the midday hours for lunch or brunch or any kind of Easter egg hunts. It's going to be quiet. It's going to be near 80 degrees and then 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. this afternoon and evening, a 30% chance for some strong to severe storms, 90 degrees for the high temperature, and I'll detail exactly which areas have the best chance for some storms coming up here this afternoon. But I know a lot of people are going to be out and about. So if you are planning on being out between 4 to 9 p.m. tonight, know that you're going to want to stay up to date with the weather. And I'll detail that chance for storms coming up here in just a bit. Sarah and Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, San Antonio police are looking for the suspect involved in an early morning shooting in the parking lot of a bar on the city's north side. That shooting ending with a man in critical condition in the hospital. Jonathan Cotto joining us live near the scene with more. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Max. Good morning, Sarah. And you're in, in fact right that we're learning that man was shot in this parking lot right outside of this bar here on the city's north side. But let's take a look at what that scene looked like earlier this morning. We know police were called out to the brew pub here on the city's north side close to 2.30 this morning. They say it was a fight that started inside the pub that quickly escalated and carried out to the parking lot. Police say they found at least 15 shell casings and at least five vehicles were hit. Uh, Max, Sarah, right now we're told the gunman did take off. He left the scene. Uh, police have been getting different accounts of what that vehicle's color is. So they're hoping to be able to interview the victim at the hospital and gain more information on that suspect and what exactly happened out here earlier this morning. Reporting live from the city's north side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Firefighters arrived on scene to find flames had already taken over half of a home. This is what's left. It happened last night at a house on Bluff Street near Culebra Road on the city's west side. Crews were able to put out that fire quickly. No one was hurt, but the family will have to find somewhere else to go for the time being. So firefighters say the fire was sparked by a smoking accident. Damages are estimated around $30,000. A San Antonio staple, icon, and legend given his final blessings just yesterday. Hispanic Elvis gathered a crowd one last time at his funeral service. Friends and family gathered to pay their respects to the man who became a fixture at Market Square. He was sorry missed this fiesta as the news of his passing came as fiesta preps were underway. Hospitalized in January, 
He embattled an esophagus of infection along with COVID-19. He died last month at the age of 76. When he was healthy, he captivated crowds with his impersonations of the king of rock and roll Elvis, his handmade outfits, his handmade guitar. George Cisneros, Hispanic Elvis's brother, says he is proud of the legacy his brother left behind and that he lived his life doing what he loved, entertaining. And I saw the people, all the crowds that he had, and like, man, bro, you got, you know, a lot of people, and a lot of people are behind you. They love you, you know. So, it made me very proud. Chris Nettles hopes people continue to share his brother's legacy, so he won't be forgotten by the San Antonio community. Hispanic Elvis's real name is known by many now, but his family said he was a private person who say he preferred to go by JJ or Hispanic Elvis. Well, after two years, the Bear County Jail has no positive COVID-19 cases. The last time this happened was back on April 10th of 2020. So since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, 36,000 inmates have been tested for COVID. And of those, 2,880 have tested positive. BCSO officials say they will continue to test all inmates who enter the jail and remain in isolation for 10 days pending that result. Inside the jail, inmates are still required to wear masks and COVID-19 vaccines are available for any inmate who wants one. The Russian Defense Ministry issued an emergency statement calling for the remaining Ukrainian forces at a plant in Mariupol to lay down their arms and halt fighting. ABC's Christine Sloan explains. Russia says it is now in control of Mariupol, which it has been brutally shelling for weeks. The Kremlin says the only Ukrainian fighters who are left there are in a steel plant and surrounded and is calling for them to surrender. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky says Ukrainian forces in Mariupol are indeed blocked and that while they're still fighting, the situation is critical. If Russia does indeed control Mariupol, it would open a key land bridge connecting Crimea to Ukraine's eastern Donbass region, where U.S. officials say the Russians are preparing a new offensive in the coming days. Meantime, Russia continues hitting targets across Ukraine, including this oil refinery in the east. Kharkiv also coming under attack on Saturday, an explosion believed to be caused by a missile left at least one person dead, another 18 wounded. Alina Fursova and her young daughters were caught in the explosion. Shrapnel is flying and cracking, she says. Some woman, God bless her, covered me with her body. And in Kyiv, new rocket attacks, even though Russian forces have withdrawn from the region surrounding the capital. We always have a threat of Russians coming back and trying to seize our capital. Russians uh, have shown that they are willing to use anything and everything to try and subjugate our country. But despite the war and threats of airstrikes, thousands of Ukrainians are returning home. We want to grow up our nation, our businesses, uh, our lives. We are Ukrainians. We are Ukrainians. <laughs> we can live in another country. Christine Sloan, ABC News, New York. In your morning headlines, a developing story out of Pittsburgh. Two people are dead and 11 injured after a shooting. Police say they are working nine different crime scenes. The shooting happened at a party at an Airbnb. About 200 people were inside the home at that time of the shooting. Officers arrived to the scene to find people jumping out of windows and running down the streets. There is no information on any suspects at this time. And take a look at your screen caught on camera. Ring doorbell video capturing the moment a duplex in Virginia exploded. Now, two people were hurt in the blast. A man and a woman both are in the hospital this morning with what we're told are life threatening injuries. While the exact cause of this explosion not yet determined, investigators on the scene are suggesting it may have been caused by a propane tank. Time now, just about 838, 72 degrees out. Easter extra special Aww. time this year for some families. Look at these precious photos. We'll be showing you how they celebrated uh, these babies with Easter in these photos in just a bit. But first, we're going to take a live look out of the Alamo City, hot and humid. And Sarah's been saying there's a possibility of storms later in the day. We're going to check in with her in just a bit. Putin's war machine takes a major blow, his inner circle under fire. Now with new horrors revealed, Ukraine's prime minister exclusive with George and crime in America. New York's mayor and top cop, what can be done now to stop the surge? Today on ABC's This Week. All right. 
Take a look at your screen. This is some cute stuff. Easter cuties, newborns at North Central Baptist Hospital arriving just in time for Easter. Hospital staff dressed up the babies and decorated their bassinets with bunny ears, cards, and look at that one. Oh carrots. my God. <laughs> and Easter eggs and carrots. <laughs> and to show no child it like any other, each bunny has a special theme. Oh. So you've got a bunny in a tortilla. <laughs> like that Fantastic. unicorn bunny. Nice. And princess bunny. Okay. So congratulations to all of the new parents of Aww. these little bunny babies. I saw the unicorn one. It's cute. That was cute. All right, so it is Easter Sunday. If you haven't figured out your plans yet, you're a procrastinator like the rest of us. Don't worry. We have a full list of what is going on today. Several churches in the area, they are hosting Easter themed events for the whole family to enjoy. We have a list right now. Head to ksat.com. We have everything from an egg drop from a helicopter. What are some of the other ones? Uh, the egg extravaganza at the Tower of America yes. is kicking off. I at, uh, there's several. I, I know noon <laughs> and 4 p.m. are two of those times. Uh, the Easter Bunny will be there. Mm -hmm. uh, but Calgary Church is the one doing that egg drop, and it starts okay. at 10. Yeah, so head out there and head to caseout.com. All right, so forget a vending machine for sodas and snacks. What about a vending machine for books? Yes, you heard that right. Kids at a Wisconsin elementary school are loving it. Two teachers at an elementary school in Wisconsin got an idea from another school. Every book costs one token. Students earn a token when it's their birthday or if they've just been good in class. Now, teachers say this is a great way to incentivize kids to start reading. The machine was about $5,500 and it was paid for with Title I funds. So if, if we had a vending machine here for books, would that incentivize you to read? Yeah, I think so. I, it's cool. I, I love reading. Yeah. As long as there's a weather book in there. Okay. You are the girl checking out the weather books. Yes, I am. <laughs> and you know, today we're going to be on alert as a meteorology team for some storms between 4 p.m. and 9 p.m. There could be a few storms that easily become severe around San Antonio. Now, I know it's a bit of a double-edged sword, right? We need the rain, but we don't want the severe weather. But any storms that develop will have the potential between 4 p.m. and 9 p.m. to produce some large hail, perhaps up to the size of of golf balls or even greater. So we're going to be on alert. Notice that San Antonio metro area, all of the San Antonio metro area is under that scattered risk for severe weather uh, later this afternoon and into the early evening hours. We'll take a wider view here. Really, it's mainly along and west of 35 that have the best chance for some storms this afternoon between 4 p.m. and 9 p.m. And that does extend all the way up to the Austin metro area as well. There's also an area off across the Mississippi River Valley that has a risk for severe weather today too. And this is the system that we're looking at that's producing the storm chances here across the south. A low pressure system, that's where all of the healthy rain is. Unfortunately, we're on the tail end of this system. The stationary front is going to go into motion again and become a uh, cold front as it pushes off to the south. And that cold front is going to provide us with just enough lift to fire off a few isolated strong to severe Severe storms. It's difficult to nail down the exact placement of these. That's the nature uh, of this kind of weather. Uh, so when I show you this future cast, don't pay attention exactly where the placement of the storms is. Just know that it's a possibility. Again, most of the day today is going to be quiet. If you have plans up until 4 p.m. Uh, this afternoon, you won't have to worry about any storms. It's after 4 p.m. that we have that possibility for some strong to severe storms. And you can see this particular model does pulse up a bit of a hail core there. And so hail is going to be a possibility with any storms that develop. We're going to keep an eye on it. This particular model sends one of those storms right through San Antonio. And while some areas could pick up some very healthy rainfall, unfortunately, it's not going to put much of a dent in the drought because of the isolated to wide widely scattered nature of the storms. But again, by 7 p.m., we'll still have a couple of isolated severe storms out there. And then into the evening, uh, we'll see our rain chances come to an end. Outside right now, a few peaks of sunshine, but generally still cloudy, 72 degrees. East-southeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Uh, there's a 30% chance for storms today, but 100% chance of humidity, okay? Outside, visibility is lower in many places because of some patch 
Apache drizzle like in Bernie. It's down to five miles down to four miles in New Braunfels down to five in Kerrville and the humidity is the big story uh, out there right now. Uh, dew points are very high and so it's going to be humid all day long. That low level humidity also one of the ingredients for our isolated storms this afternoon. Otherwise, it's going to be hot. Temperatures are going to climb to near 90 degrees this afternoon, quite a bit warmer than our average high of 91. It'll be 94 in Floresville, 95 in Poteet, 95 in Divine, 95 in Hondo, 90 up in Bernie. All right, here's your KSAT 12 hour forecast for San Antonio staying cloudy through about noon. So again, any Easter egg hunts going on early this morning or into the early part of the afternoon should be just fine as far as the weather is concerned, just humid and warm with highs uh, with temperatures in the 80s. Rather, it's if you have later plans between 4 p.m. and 9 p.m., that's when some severe storms are possible. We'll be looking at a high temperature of 90 degrees. And again, even though the chance for rain is only 30%, if a storm develops, it would have the potential to produce some hail. Meteorologist Katie Blake will be here this afternoon keeping an eye on things. Uh, and of course, will as a weather team be keeping an eye on things as well this Easter afternoon. Otherwise, tomorrow 86 degrees for the high temperature, plenty of sunshine. It's going to be windy tomorrow and Tuesday. Speaking of Tuesday, Tuesday morning, you might even need that jacket in the early morning hours. Temperatures will be in the 50s again with the potential today between 4 p.m. and 9 p.m. for isolated to scattered severe storms. Make sure to have the KSAT Weather Authority app handy. We can go live right to your phone no matter what you're doing. Cool. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. So, Sarah Costa kind of opened the show with it. Tomorrow is your deadline to file the income tax if you want to return. So, if you're filing electronically, you actually only have until 8 p.m. Yeah. this evening. And if you happen to be one of those procrastinators out there, while you're doing your taxes, don't forget you have to report anything that you took out of the digital money jar. So we're talking about cryptocurrency. Anyone who has dabbled in digital money may be wondering if it affects their tax return. ABC's M. Wynn has the answer. When you go to file your taxes this year, this question from your tax preparer or filing software will come up. At any time during 2021, did you receive or sell any virtual currency? Crypto is a new asset class. At the end of the day, it's still, through the IRS's eyes, considered to be an investment. So just like you might sell stocks or bonds or mutual funds and cash out, it's important to report the cashing out of any crypto, especially if it earned you a profit. How much you'll be taxed depends on whether the profit is a short-term capital gain or a long-term capital gain. In other words, how long you held on to the asset. Let me give you an example. If you purchase an investment in 2020 and you sold it in 2021 and you held it for less than a year, that's going to be considered a short-term capital gain. However, if you sold that same type of investment, maybe two years later, that's going to be considered a long term capital gain. You'll pay more in taxes on short term capital gains. The tax rate on a long term capital gain sale is anywhere from zero to 20 percent, usually averages out at 15 percent. But short term capital gains tax is more expensive. It's up to 37 percent in 2021. If you were paid for a job with digital currency last year, you'll need to report that too. So if you do receive your income as cryptocurrency, you will need to report it on your taxes and it's gonna be taxed similar, just like if you receive wage income from your employers. You can find more information on cryptocurrency and how it could impact your taxes on the IRS website, irs.gov. M1 ABC News. Time now, just about 8.51, 73 degrees out. We'll be right back. investigating a shooting taking place right here in this parking lot outside of this north side bar information is limited but we do know the suspect did take off and the victim was taken to university hospital police tell us they were called out to the roof pub here on the city's north side close to 2 30 this morning they say it was a fight that started inside the pub that escalated and carried out to the parking lot police say they found at least 15 shell casings and at least five vehicles were hit and again that suspect did take off police are telling us they are receiving different accounts of that vehicle's description, mainly its color. So they're hoping to get more information from the victim at the hospital. This shooting remains under investigation. Reporting from the city's north side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. 
This Easter morning will stay cloudy and humid with temperatures in the 70s around lunch and Easter egg hunt. It's going to be humid, mostly cloudy and near 80 degrees. So you're used to, they should be just fine out there for any kind of egg hunts or anything like that. But from 4 p.m. to 9 p.m., if you have anything scheduled, then you're going to have to watch out because there are going to be some isolated strong to severe storms. If storms can get going, they could produce up to golf ball sized hail. So we're going to be on alert time frame again there. I know the case at logos over that, but it should be 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. Otherwise, it's going to be hot with a high temperature of 90 degrees this afternoon. We'll be keeping our eyes to the skies here at KSAT uh, from 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. for that potential for severe weather. Otherwise, a warm week ahead with just a few isolated showers and storms here and there. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, hey, happy Easter, everyone. Happy Easter. Easter. Enjoy your time with family and friends. All right, and hey, your birthday's tomorrow. Woo, my birthday's happy birthday! Tomorrow. Woo!